Here we are again, everyone. We're continuing our series on infantry and battle armor, and we're going to be looking at specifically anti-mech attacks. This is what you've all been waiting for, yeah, people. Yeah, so this is the fun <laughs> stuff. This is getting on there and ripping panels off and getting into the nice little bits inside. Putting satchel charges on their ankles yeah, and stuff. all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that now, so stick right. around. Anti-mech attacks. Swoosh. So, battle armor and conventional infantry can perform two types of anti-mech attacks. The first one is leg attacks. Leg attacks. And the second one, which is a lot more dangerous. A lot more dangerous. But technically more rewarding. If Very you effective if yeah. you can do it properly. Is a swarm attack. Yes. Right? But we'll start with the leg attacks first, because they're probably mm. more, more likely to happen, yeah. I think. So, some, some general rules. Um... You you can get a specifically trained anti mech infantry. Yes. Um, infantry has an anti mech attack skill. Conventional infantry that that doesn't have anti mech training is an eight, and that's your base target number. Mm. Um, you can't do it with uh, mechanized. Was mechanized? Yeah, mechanized yeah. can't do so it. Mechanized infantry can't make anti mech attacks. No. Which is sad. Um, <laughs> It'd be good in the movies, but yeah, not quite practical. Inner sphere battle armor with body mounted missile launchers can't do anti mech attacks until their launchers are jettisoned. Yeah. Um, the same as with jumping. Uh, you can't do this against um, proto mechs. I no. think somebody had a comment about that. Yeah, someone did um, ask about that, but no, they're just, they're so, just too yeah. angry. Yeah, in case you didn't see that comment, no. You can't do it. You can do swarm though. attacks against vehicles, which is very, very cool. Yeah. Um, and industrial mechs, anti-mech attacks receive a minus one, two hit modifier against nice. industrial mechs. Yeah, because because they're not sort of sealed they're generally. They're not armoured and, like and that. enclosed yeah. and all that. So there's lots of grips and handholds and That's places right. that are nasty yep, to pull bombs. There. Hello, buddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, leg attacks first. Infantry units that begin a weapon attack phase in the same hex as a mech may choose to make attack the mech's legs instead of making a standard weapon attack. Yes. So all of these rules, just while we're talking about it, Total Warfare book, all right? Page 220. 220. That's it. Um, so your base number is your anti-mech skill, and as I mentioned before, the, the conventional infantry that isn't trained in anti-mech warfare gets an 8 as yeah. the beginning thing. Um, I think it's a five for anti-mech. It's on it page one, 40. 40, was it? Yep. So it's a five for foot platoons with anti-mech training, a six for jump or motorized platoons with anti-mech training, yep. and battle armor infantry get an automatic five if you're in a sphere. Clan get a four on average because they're thing. But the five is the standard uh, that you're paying for with your BV. Yeah. Right? Okay, so call it a five. Uh, you can adjust that however you like. And C bills. And you, C bills. You spend C yeah. bills to do the extra training for those people who are <laughs> into that sort of thing. Uh, the unbalanced sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, the, the completely Taren. unbalanced <laughs> thing, which we've discussed before. <laughs> oh, dear. That threw me for a loop. Um, so you've got uh, base two hit number is is that uh, you modify the infantry base two hit number for target movement and terrain and also if they're prone or immobile, which um, is nice because if an immobile target, yes please. Yeah, so hitting their legs when they're immobile is kind of pointless. You may as well swarm them while they're immobile. But if they're immobile and standing up, then. A leg attack is a lot easier to well, do. It's a neck four. It's a, it's a neck four. So your four. untrained guys suddenly go, oh, I know how to do yeah, this. Yeah, I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, you also have to modify it for the leg attack table, which is on page 221. It's combined with the swarm attack table, but it's right there. So if you've got 22 uh, in or more troopers in your platoon, or you've got four to six uh, battle armor troopers, then you get a flat zero. Uh, as that number goes down, as you lose troopers, you slowly get worse and worse attack modifiers until 
you have either no battle armor guys, in which case you can't make an attack anyway, or you have one to four conventional troopers and you can't make an attack. Mm. So you need at least five people in your troop. And if you want your maximum efficiency, you want to have 22 or more. Uh, so, yeah, there's no negatives there. Right? Notice that. There's no negatives. There's no bonuses for having lots of people. You just don't get a, a, a penalty. Okay? But the payoff is is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, if your two-hit roll is successful, the attacker rolls on the front column of the appropriate mech kick location table and applies four points of damage to the rolled location. In addition to the four points of damage, the attacker rolls 2d6 and consults determining critical hits nice if it's a seven or less it only takes the four points if you get one or more criticals you resolve them normally and that is cool that's very cool well you could potentially get two chances technically you could get three because there's no modifier to that critical hit roll oh no no what i mean is two chances at the roll because if it does it does the four damage if it's only got say three points of armor left oh, it goes yeah, internal yeah, yeah. yeah you get another roll yeah, so if you if you can get your four points to go internal, then you yeah. get two rolls. Yeah, yeah that, oh, 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 which means you can have six. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like technically, blow, you, could, you could get six. You could hits. blow the leg off twice. I was going to say you can technically blow the leg off a mech with yeah. an infantry platoon, which is really really cool. I like the idea of that. Uh, you can only be the target of a single leg attack in a given turn. Yeah, uh, yeah. which makes sense. Just too busy. Um, if your target unit is immobile, you can the infantry unit can make an aim shot, which, which is really nice. Basically, you get to pick the leg you're going that's to blow it. up. That's exactly right. That's that's good. Um, it still follows the rules that are on page one ten. So, I mean, it's what was a seven, eight, nine. Yeah, you, roll, if, you you pick what you want. You roll two d six. It's a seven, eight, or a nine or something. You get the location you yeah, want. Yeah, it's, it's minus four for a immobile target. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, six, seven, or eight. Oh, six, seven. Eight. You get the designated location for any other result you roll normally. Um, but if you've got a mech that's immobile and standing in front of you, and it's got one leg that's got two points of armor, and the other one's got twenty three, then an aim shot isn't a bad yes, move. Yeah, that's right, definitely. Uh, so yeah, um, vibro claw manipulators, oh, your favorite oh, things. Yeah. They're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Battle army units equipped with a single vibro claw inflict one additional point of damage, Ooh. and units equipped with two get two additional points of damage, which <laughs> gives them a total of six points of damage to that leg. And you still get the critical hit roll as per normal. So nice, which is cool. That's so nice. <laughs> so your I like that your clan battle armor units they get uh, if you've got a full troop, you've got that four or five base level. If it's a full troop, you don't get a, a modifier for that, and they'll be doing five points of damage instead of the four if yeah. they hit, because yeah. they've got a single claw each, right? Yeah, they yeah. do. So that's pretty cool. Oh, man. Against something that's light, that will rip a leg off. Oh, that's just horrible. You, yeah. you, could, you could definitely pull a leg off with, with enough battle armor and infantry units around the place. All right, so in addition to leg attacks, there's also swarm attacks. Swarm attacks. Which is not just limited to mechs, like you were saying. You can use it on vehicles too. So let's have, yeah. a, let's have a look at that. But you, are, you are basically taking your infantry or battle army unit. You're clambering up a mech or over a vehicle, and you're trying to hit valuable pieces. Yeah. Vital bits. The vulnerables. Um... Yeah, so you, again, have to be in the same hex. And, again, you can't use your weapons or attack the legs. You have to swarm. Uh, unit making a normal swarm attack rushes a mech, grapples it, climbs up, and then inflicts damage against the mech warrior or the upper parts of the mech in the next turn. Yeah. In the next turn. Yes, that's the downside. <laughs> only, only one swarm attack can be made against the unit in a given turn. Uh, so base two hit number is your anti-mech skill again. Uh, modified by the number of people in the uh, in number of troopers in the unit. Uh, swarm attack table on 221 there. So again, you can see there's only pluses. You don't get any minuses. Mm. And if you don't have at least 16 guys in a conventional anti-mech troop, you are not able to do what yes. you need to do. Wasting your time. Just wasting go for your those time. legs. 
Yeah, basically. Um, the swarm attack, two hit roll, oh, modified it as normal. Uh, so target movement, terrain, and whether they're prone or immobile. But yep. the attack roll determines only if the infantry unit manages to gain secure footholds on the mech. Yeah, so you're not even doing damage yet. That's, that's, that's just not getting damage. on there safely. So you have to make a two-hit roll to make sure that you're on there. Uh, swarming unit cannot make attacks against any other target other than the unit it's swarming or mechanized battle armor being carried by the unit it is swarming. We'll go into mechanized battle armor basically later. Yeah. Um, a swarming unit can end a swarming attack during any subsequent weapon attack phase. It's then placed in the hex containing the target mech with no further effects. It's uh, important to note that while they're swarming a target, your infantry unit does not count towards stacking. So mm. it, it isn't counted as stacking uh, while it's clambering over the mech or the vehicle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if the swarmed mech is in a hex containing two enemy units and is destroyed, swarming infantry unit automatically violates the stacking rule and then you have to... Domino, domino effect thing, and yeah. people around so it's it's cool but it can lead to some problems later on you just need to remember to do that i mean i can imagine a situation coming up when you're in a city you've got multiple yes. guys who want to jump on because they're in a position and you're going to have like, these streets where they can't quite go anywhere it's going to get boxed in yeah. yeah so you can you can have someone in the hex with them they make a successful swarm attack, they climb onto the mech, and they no longer count for stacking. And then you can move into a hex with another group, and they can make a like a leg attack, yeah. or just shoot, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, so, yeah, you, you've got a, a thing that's happening there. Um, you can do aim shots as normal. Um, so if the units are mobile, you can do it as an aim shot. Uh, and battle armor with magnetic claw manipulators get a minus one modifier to any swarm attack. Yeah. To hit roll. Yeah, really handy. Uh, that is magnetic claw manipulators, not vibro claw manipulators. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Specifying. Uh, aerospace units and VTOLs can't be swarmed unless they land. And a unit that has been successfully swarmed cannot be the target of another swarm attack until the current attacking unit ends its swarm is removed or is destroyed. Uh, the target unit is carrying friendly battle armor, uh, which is mechanized battle armor. Uh, the carrying unit can still be the target of a swarm attack, but the attacking player must apply additional two hit modifiers based on the number of surviving troopers attacking versus the number of surviving troopers mounted. So we'll probably go into that. Um, oh, we may as well do it now. But, um, you can see the Swarm Attack Modifiers table on 221 there as well. Uh, so, conventional troopers. You have to have a certain number of dudes to get pluses or minuses. Battle Armor Troopers, and then Battle Armor Troopers in the Friendly Mechanized. So, what you've got is your Elementals are the basic Mechanized Battle Armor. So, they're on an Omni Mech. Yes. You swarm that Omni mech, they can then try and fight you off. Yeah, that's what that table really is. Really handy. Yeah. yeah, that's what that table is trying to trying to give you. Mm. Um, so not a, for those of you who are new to the game, and this, maybe this is your first or second view or whatever that you've been watching. Oh God! <laughs> this, don't do that. Don't go back and watch, go some, back of and watch some of the others. But yeah, basically, the clans, the Omni mechs, were able to carry a unit of battle armor, and they were sort of. Trained to hang they, on. They were specifically sort of designed to work in concert so, with yeah, battle armor. That's right. Yeah. The the elementals and they they the the mech warriors that are in there know how to how to move and act with these battle armor hanging onto the mech. They've got specific handholds and things for those battle armor units, and the battle armor units are trained to work in concert with the Omni Max. Yeah, because you've got a you've got a what up to five tons additional weight on your unit that's gonna that's, that's gonna, gonna need you to focus a little bit more. So there is yeah. some training with that. But that allows a unit that can only move at about three to move a lot further if you want to further. Was it the um fire moth? Yeah the clans or Dasher. something? Yeah so out, whatever out it is. like uh, 15, 20, right, 20, oh, 20 with mass, I think it had as yeah, well. Yeah, it's like, it's like 15 or so normally. It's insanely fast. <laughs> it goes, shoo, and, whoop, and you off. could, yeah, you could get that battle armor into, wow. 
anywhere, basically, very, very, very quickly. Very quickly. If you want to avoid all those ambush positions in the city, just run right through it. Or so you want to get your guys into an ambush position in the city. True. Zoop. True. Yeah. And drop them off at the building and then zoop. There's a, lot, there's a lot with mechanised. We are going to do a separate video with that. But just for this example, Taryn's sort of mentioning yeah. what's going on there. Because there's a lot of lot of extra bits and pieces around swarm attacks. So yeah. that's one of the things that you have to remember is if you are carrying... If the, the unit you're swarming is carrying friendly battle armour, you have to, like, fight Adjust against them it, to do yeah. it. Um, vehicles, you get a minus two automatically because they're just... A lot easier to climb on. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so yeah. you you get an automatic minus two. Um. Oh yeah. So the mech you're swarming can try to fight you off. So even if he's not holding friendly troops, they can try to get rid of a swarming unit. Um. So they're basically making uh, punch attacks against themselves. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting why are you yourself? Hitting yourself? I know why I'm hitting myself. It's battle armor on me. <laughs> so, during physical attack, rather than making a physical attack against somebody else, you make up to two piloting skill rolls, one for each arm, adding a plus four modifier, as well as any modifiers for damage, construction, yeah. uh, normally applied to a punching attack. Okay, so it's, you, you're basically punching yourself. Um... Cannot make an attempt with any arm that fired a weapon, which is the same thing same as normal. Point, yeah. Uh, or with an arm that mounts any physical attack weapon. So your hatchet man can't use the arm that has the hatchet in it. Yeah. Okay. Although uh, a retractable blade would be handy for that. Retractable blade. Yeah. Very nice. Um, again, I just keep... Yeah. <laughs> 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 Battle armor skewer. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. A mech that attempts to remove a swarming unit in this way may not make any other physical attack during the same turn. Uh, you can't attempt to remove swarming infantry while you're doing a death from above. <laughs> is everybody clear? Okay. So I don't know if <laughs> <as> it is. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> <Get on! laughs> uh, <clears throat> Successful piloting skill roll forces the infantry unit off the mech and back into the hex. The infantry unit takes damage equal to a punch from that mech. Yeah. Unlike non-infantry weapon attacks against conventional infantry, the damage is just applied. Um, it's it, it takes the full punch damage from that mech. But if you're unsuccessful, the mech hits itself. Yeah. So it takes pilot, uh, punching damage from the appropriate arm rather than failing, uh, rather than falling, and the infantry troops stay attached. So you roll D6, 1D6, and consult the front table and determine the location for the damage. So you could potentially punch yourself in the head you could. if you fail these piloting skill rolls. And if you're doing two of them, you could potentially punch yourself in the head twice. Now, I was thinking about like the mechs that have that triple strength Myama to do double damage on physical attacks. So that'd be great if you hit to knock them off. You could really do some damage, but if you miss, you just beat the crap out of yourself. It's so yep. bad. And oh. that it, it's worth noting that if you declare that you're going to try and do it twice, so you have to declare before you do the roll yeah. that you are going to do this or just this. Yeah. Right? And if you do both, then you have to resolve both, both. even if the first one wipes them off. Right? So you could still potentially hit yourself, um, which is nasty. But look, there's another great example of why you should put some points into piloting, piloting skill. Yes, yeah. it's always I don't know. Everyone's like, well, I understand gunnery. Gunnery is important. Gunnery, but piloting gunnery, is gunnery, also gunnery, very important too. There's a lot of stuff you use your piloting for, not just <laughs> staying upright. <laughs> what about quad, uh, quad mechs? Uh, so I, I don't, think I don't, I don't think they can do because I can't punch. But I don't no. think because they won't be able to kick either. They'd have, they'd I don't have to think do they can actually uh, remove. No. I don't think they can. It doesn't mention it there. They'd have to try something else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the falling and dropping prone and all that sort of thing. Mm. 
So you've got, uh, during the movement Winter. phase, the following turn, the infantry that have not been knocked off travel with the mech. Jump capable mechs may attempt to shake off their attackers during the movement phase. The mech jumps, a controlling player makes a piloting skill roll with a plus four modifier upon landing, in addition to any other piloting skill rolls required by the jump, obviously. And on a successful roll, the infantry unit falls off into the hex uh, in which it landed. Cannot move or shoot and take 3d6 da points of damage for being basically slammed down into the ground. Yeah. Uh, the damage is applied to the infantry unit as if from an infantry attack. Uh, if you if you fail that roll, it doesn't really matter. They just stay on. But yeah. that is, for jumping uh, mechs, that is actually a really good way to get rid of them. It's a plus four, but if you've got a decent piloting skill, that's not a terribly difficult no. thing to make. Uh, and it's not and going to damage you if you fail. And the quads, because they get the neg two inherent bonus... For piloting. For piloting, because they're yeah. quads. Assuming they haven't taken any damage. Or so whatever. if you've got one with jump jets, that's mm -hmm. basically your only one of your few ways to do it. Yeah. Um, efficient, though, I reckon. <laughs> That'd be so good. Uh, you can technically drop your mechs prone. This is a thing that you are allowed to do as one of the optional rules. You're allowed to deliberately prone your mech so that it's lower and doesn't get damage and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if you fall over, uh, the swarming infantry falls off into that hex, uh, cannot move, and takes one hit consisting of 2d6 points of damage. Ho, ho, ho. You can drop prone with more force than going prone standard move to shake off your assailant, but doing so requires a successful piloting skill roll. If the roll fails, the mech goes prone but doesn't dislodge the infantry. If it succeeds, they fall off and take damage as though they fell. Mech that drops prone takes damage as from an accidental fall as well, mm -hmm. and the controlling player must make an additional piloting skill roll to avoid piloting damage. So you're not just going prone, you're slamming yourself down on the ground deliberately. To, yeah, because you've got okay. to shake them off. Yeah. You're trying to shake the infantry off. Um, oh, if, if you can, technically, if you can shake them off into prohibited terrain, yeah. they're instantly destroyed. That's right. Yeah, so your water, water is always yeah. a favourite. So water is a good one. If a, if a swarmed mech enters depth two or deeper water or goes prone in depth one, the infantry unit is just destroyed. Uh, unless they have UMU movement, obviously. Um, and fire hexes as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't think they're mentioned in here, but yeah, that is that is a thing that, that happens. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, fire, I don't, yeah, fire's not in the main code of warfare. I think that's in TAC, TAC Ops, TAC yeah. Corporations. So battle army units equipped with magnetic claws add a plus one modifier to the target unit's piloting skill roll for attempting to remove the battle armor. So <laughs> the one that you do with your arms, the falling prone one and the jump one will all be at plus one if you try it on stuff with magnetic claws. Uh, so if you're building anti-mech stuff, magnetic claws are good. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. Um, if an aerospace unit that's being swarmed takes off, it automatically shakes off swarming infantry units. Infantry unit is placed in first hex where they left the ground and takes a hit consisting of 4d6 damage. <laughs> yeah, don't be on a jet when it takes off. <laughs> Seriously, that's not a good move. Yeah. Ah, uh, dear. This isn't... Uh, what's that? Mission Impossible. Well, let's think. <laughs> for some reason, you can hang on for dear life and still make it out. Oh, it's all all the the it's not like combat games and and action movies where they're taking off in like a DC one thirty or whatever the big cargo planes with the door still open. Yeah, and yeah. everybody's just standing there looking out. Or well, the aliens drop ships where they're taking off and they're all sitting on the edges. <laughs> No. No, no. You're, you're dead, mate. <laughs> no. You're dead. You go... <laughs> That's you go. Uh, um, yeah. So a, a swarm vehicle can also get rid of a swarming unit, so you have to perform er erratic manoeuvres. Must be capable of moving at flank speed and is considered to be at flank speed for the turn, but can only spend its cruising movement points. So... 
All driving skill rolls receive a plus one modifier while the vehicle is performing erratic maneuvers. At the end of the vehicle's movement, if you make a driving skill with a plus four mod, including the plus one modifier already noted, so it's a plus three plus that plus one. Um, so plus four overall. Wow. This modifier drops to a plus two if the vehicle's using VTOL movement. So if they swarm a helicopter while it's landed, then yeah. you only get a two to, to knock them off. If it's successful, the swarming infantry is shaken off and is knocked off by, as if knocked off by a jumping mech. Okay. Which means they drop down and form. take the QD6. Yeah. Um, right. So they don't, they can't move as far and they're paying like the flanks. So you, you're considered to be flanking, yeah. but you can only spend your cruising Cruise movement. Speed. Right, okay. Because yeah. the driver's doing... You're, yeah, you're okay. fishtailing all over the place and you're going backwards and forwards across the roads and stuff and trying to get them to shake off. Mm. Swinging um, your turret around like a Dalek and looking at it. Like... <laughs> Great, now I'm going to have that vision. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, uh, so attacking... Against a swarm unit. So what happens to you when you're in combat with huge guns and big mechs and you've got infantry sitting all over you? Hmm. Well, they get hit by the bullets that are coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Take that. Oh, uh, dear. So you can hit the infantry that are swarming a, a mech or a vehicle or whatever. Uh, so when a swarm mech takes a hit in... Any torso location, or a vehicle takes one in any location, you roll a d6. On a 1 to 4, the infantry unit doesn't take damage, and the total value of the weapon damage is applied directly to the carrying unit's location. <laughs> a result of 5 to 6 means the swarming infantry unit is hit. <laughs> uh, the battle armor, a randomly chosen trooper, takes maximum damage before the entire swarmed unit takes damage. Any... Damage left after the trooper is destroyed is applied to location hit. For conventional infantry, you just mark the damage off as though it came from another infantry unit. See, another good reason to have machine guns. Yeah. You just spray your mate there. <laughs> 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 just, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> I'm a light uh, mech. I care a lot. It hurts. <laughs> now, these are all of the bad things that can happen to you while you're swarming. Yeah. Shall we talk about the good the, the things? The good that things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. <laughs> So this is how you actually damage people with this. So if by some miracle of dice you manage to stay on the mech, <laughs> you can make normal arm-mounted weapon attacks during the weapon attack phase. Uh, only weapons mounted in the arms of battle armor units can be used in swarm attacks. Uh, so all attacks automatically hit. You roll 2d6 and consult the appropriate swarm hit location table. So you have a look on 222. There's the swarm attacks hit location table. Bing! <laughs> you've got a 2d6 roll, you've got bipedal, and you've got uh, four leg locations. But they're all basically torso, heads, etc. But the bipedal guys have arm locations as well. That's yeah. the only difference. Um, Ooh, two chances at head, though. Yeah. It's, it's nasty. So a 2 is a head and a 12 is a head. Um, swarm damage to vehicles use a randomly determined side column of the vehicle hit location damage oh, table. Side. And it's side, so motive hits are at oh, the extra yeah. thing, which astute of you will know. Uh, swarm damage to grounded aerospace units uses a randomly determined side column of the appropriate column of the aerospace units hit location table. Damage. <laughs> damage from a swarm attack equals the attacking unit's total non-missile arm-mounted weapon damage. Okay. Potential. So it's it's not clustered or anything like that. So it's just you hit, you hit. Yep. You've hit. <laughs> ba battle armor applies all damage to one location. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. So a full strength elemental battle armor point equipped with a small laser inflicts a single 15 point grouping of damage on one location. Oh. That makes them head choppers. They are a decapitator unit because you, you only get a 12, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah, if they get either a 2 or a 12, that's it. They wipe your head off. Oh, but still. <laughs> if it's, yeah, let's just do an automatic PPC 
Clan PPC strength kit. Yeah. Um, battle of armor point equipped with two small lasers would inflict 30 points of damage. Oh. Etc. Infantry units can continue to make weapon attacks on the mech in subsequent weapon attack phases until the mech is destroyed or manages to shake off the attacking unit or the swarming unit chooses to end its swarming attack. So you've got your physical attack phase where you can try and punch them off. You've got your movement phase where you can either throw yourself on the ground or try jumping. But if neither of those worked, then in the weapon attack phase, they're still hitting you. And it's an automatic hit. So, yeah, it's not good. Swarm attack may also result in one or more critical hits. In addition to determining normal damage, the player rolls once on determining critical hits, even if no internal structure took damage in the attack. See, there you go. There you go. And if you get internal structure, then you get two chances. Two chances. Vibro claws, your favourite. Yes. (laughs) Give me. One additional point of damage during a swarm attack for one vibro claw and units containing two get two additional points of damage. So you get your whatever arm mounted stuff plus those. So if you've got a laser and a vibro claw, you get the extra one. That's that's pretty good. I don't know. It's hard because the magnetic the magnetic claw manipulator helps you get on there. Helps you stay on there as, as well. well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I would rather have that and forego if, the if, damage. If you're going anti mech, always take a magnetic claw manipulator. I reckon. I think so. A, yeah, a magnetic yeah. claw in one hand and some sort of really cool weapon in the other arm, and just use that. Yeah. Because that's yeah. Um, but, but still, yeah, that's yeah. still really cool. Conventional infantry applies standard damage. Two point value groupings and applies each to a location by rolling on a swarm attack. Um, conventional infantry do not roll on determining critical hits unless their attack damages internal structure. So that whole thing with arm mounted weapons and all that, that's all battle armor. Conventional infantry just does the standard damage. You don't get the cool extra critical hit roll, but you do do your standard two point damage value groupings for your standard damage value. Yep on that extra cool thing. So your 28 dudes are doing, what What did we work it out? Was it 15 or 16? Yeah. Um, so you're clambering up this mech, you're pointing the machine gun at the cockpit and go, and that's just cool. Oh my God. <laughs> I think, if I remember rightly, I think you pay like times five the C-bill cost to make a conventional infantry unit anti mech trained. Yeah. But I tell you what, if you, if in the right situation you get them on there, that's a lot of damage, and, and you've got still, to get them off. They're just going yeah. to automatically do it. They still have standard weapons. They still have a weapon they can use against a mech, even yeah. if they can't get into the same hex and try and swarm or do a leg attack or whatever. They've still got a rifle. They've still got a machine gun. They've yeah. still got whatever. So you know they they're not that extra cost is not wasted. And if you know that you're going to be getting close to people. I mean, an anti-mech jump infantry platoon? Good lord. Yeah, yeah. That's Good what lord. I'm about. Just, yeah, no. I mean, if you can give them some sort of, like, really cool weapon, I mean, if you give them a machine gun, wow. Machine gun seems to be a, a pretty good choice, doesn't it? I mean, if, no. you're, if you're accepting the fact that you're going to be taking sort of conventional infantry and things like that, and yeah. you, you end up playing... Because, I don't know, yeah, I'm, I'm really seeing the value of them. You, you really do. Am. Yeah, you don't get to move as far or as or as fast. I mean, the, the rifles are the ones that give you one ground movement. The machine yeah. gun gives you zero ground movement. For jump infantry, the machine gun still takes a point off your jump, uh, but you still have the same number of guys in the platoon. So the people in the platoon doesn't drop. You lose a point of jump distance, but you're still doing that damage. And if you, you just increase the cost to make it anti-mech, you can then take those 21 guys and start really seriously hurting some mechs. Yeah. I, I think it's really cool. So just to, elab- just to elaborate on that, so it has a zero ground movement, but there's a couple of asterisks next to it. Mm. Basically, you choose to either move or fire. Yeah. 
but not both. But still, if you're in a, again defensive position, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's. Fine. So your your machine gun guys are just sitting there and blatting people that come too close. Yeah, and then they go, well, there's nobody else here, so let's move away. We'll sit here for a little while and we'll black people that come too close. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's, um. Uh, mechanized battle armor is the uh, last one, but we won't go into that just yet. But yeah, I mean, swarm Ooh. is. Uh, I, this, I think it's the way to go. Really, there is a lot of steps to get there, as opposed to the leg ones. And I mean, even with conventional infantry, you're doing automatic criticals like you're getting automatic rolls on critical for the leg attacks and that is really cool that is really cool i mean taking uh not even the smaller ones where you're you're breaking the armor take something big like um like a atlas or something like that if you can take its hip out there's what is it a plus three or something for a hip joint I think. Yeah, something like for that. For piloting skill checks. Yeah. If it, if it then gets hit by mechs for 20 points of damage, it's got a... Yeah, so it, per hip actuator previously destroyed is a plus two. Plus two. Okay. Well, that's still... That's something. If you can destroy the whole leg, it's plus five. Oh. So, um, Once it's down, though, you just start... You just climb on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the turn... The turn you destroy the the um, hip actuator, you have to make one with a plus two, and then after that it's plus two. But plus two, yeah. Um, leg destroyed on the turn it's destroyed is an automatic fall. Is an auto fall, yeah. yeah. And then you have what plus five, plus five with everything after that, yeah. Oof. But it's and that's all piloting driving skill rolls. After that, if you take its actuators out, it's looking at plus ones, plus twos, uh, and if you can take the whole leg off, plus five. Plus five, yeah. And that's, that's worth it. Yeah, I mean, that applies to swarm attacks as well. So if you can do a couple of leg attacks and take some actuators out, then it makes the swarming attacks that you're going to do afterwards that much easier. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And if it, if it gets hit by 20 points of damage, it's that much harder for it to stay upright. Yep. And if you can end your movement in its hex and it couldn't get up, then you can get on and start ripping it up. That, I reckon it's great. Even just, yeah, but I mean, even just shooting. You've got, you've got your prone bonus and conventional infantry in the same hex have their neg two or neg one, depending on what they've got. Depending on the weapon they're oh, using. Oh, yep. that's nasty. And, yeah, and the minus, was it minus four for the prone in the same so uh, no minus two for minus the same two yeah, yeah and then plus one if you're further away mm. <laughs> that's nice that that is a like a really really solid hit i i like them i reckon they're great yeah. i'd i'd go with battle armor with a manipulator ma magnetic manipulator definitely and something really heavy duty to put in that other arm and just send them after mix <laughs> So we haven't had a, a, a proper look at the construction rules for battle armor. I'm not sure if there's like a weight restriction limit. So um, if, they, if they're a bit too heavy, they can't do anti mech or anything like that. But well, I just had a, yeah. I just thought of it then. We can have a, when we go to have a look at sort of building and designing these yeah. sorts of things. I don't think there is. Whatever. I I don't think yeah. they have a specific weight limit for. Um, like restrictions on what they can do. Restrictions on what you can do with the way... I think quad battle armor can't do swarm attacks. Yes, that makes sense. Because um, yeah, that'd be like the mechanizing. Yeah, but still. again, I'd have to check the rules to be sure. But even so, if you've got bipedal battle armor and you put them in like uh, a four for inner sphere, you've got four of them for inner sphere and they're anti-mech trained they've got a mech claw a magnetic claw manipulator and some sort of laser then you're doing some solid 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 damage yeah what i like about battle armor is they come anti-mech trained yeah as they're standard which is so good you you've got that um what is it a five 
base. Yeah. That, oh, for inner sphere, and then you, what was it? Four for um, average is, is a average. five for inner sphere and a four, four for, for clamp. Clamp, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, I, I like them. Yeah. And but, the idea of swarming a demolisher with a, with a platoon of standard infantry is just like, I like that too. Oh, hey. That sounds cool. <laughs> Let's compare the BV we spent on our two units too. <laughs> if you can pull that off. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a base level ten, and then whatever he moved, because a standard infantry unit has an eight, and your swarm attack has a base level of plus two, even if you're at full strength. Mm. But you've got a minus two for getting a vehicle. Then you've got his movement modifiers and all that sort of stuff. But if you can pull it off, you can sit on that demolisher and just rip him up. Because you're automatically hitting on a side location for, like, full damage. It's a lot harder for, like, an assault unit to get away as well because they're not mm. really built for speed. Yeah. And the the, um, the uh, modifier is just a plus four for the driving. So there's no... You get a, an automatic plus one modifier for any driving thing. You're considered to be flanking. So if you turn on pavement, you, slide you will as well. slide. <laughs> even if you only use your cruise movement points, oh. you, you are considered to be flanking. So oh my gosh. it's and you are just making it upsetting for that guy. Yeah, because you got your control to do because you can take damage to your tracks and your wheels. And all, yeah, motor damage. If, wow. if you if you keep your demolisher still and you know there's infantry around, then you're doing something silly. That is that is yeah. You can you can take like a, a forty to sixty point unit of infantry. You can swarm that thousand and something point demolisher yeah. and you can rip it up. Yeah, do some damage. You can so cause cool. all sorts of problems for it. Yeah, that's very cool. I reckon that's great. All right. Well, there we go. Hey. Oh, hey. I promised you a little story. You didn't did. I? A little yeah. Thing. Where's my commando story? All right. So, with the commando, and the reason I mentioned this is because we were talking about this leg attacks and swarm and things like that. <laughs> One of the issues that they had with the knee joints mm. was that it was quite susceptible to leg attack from infantry. Now, the commando has okay. been. No, this is before battle armor. So, your your normal conventional infantry or whatever. We're, we're still doing that sort of thing. Wow. But yeah, it was just part of the thing. They had one of the, just the way it was designed, it was it much was easier to get them. the satchels in there and things like that. So, <laughs> and I'm like, because oh, I really I really like the Commando. Like I've used it in a lot of games and it is like a, a Lyra Lights sort of Commonwealth yeah. favourite, you know. Yeah, it's That's... it's pretty cool. But I'm like, oh. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember that <laughs> I have to remember to take infantry against you if you're going to take commandos now. They do have some rules, I think, for like bonuses and the, the quirk or whatever. The quirk probably have like that. A, I'll a, have to have a look to a see if they quirk there. if they put it in there. But um, yeah, in the in the fluff or whatever from one of the old tech readouts, they were talking about how that's it was cool. Susceptible I like to. that. I like those little stories, but I don't like it because I said that. <laughs> but that's okay. I All reckon right. it's great. So that's, that's that video, guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and uh, yes. hit that little bell because, you know, we're going to be doing some more videos. We'd like you to be the first to see them when they come out and stuff. But yes. um, we will talk about, we sort of going through here, but we're going to talk we'll, about carriers, like yeah. how to actually, like the different types of transport options for conventional infantry, mechanized and battle armor as mm. well. The rules on how they work, taking damage and whatever All else. All that sort of stuff. But it is it is definitely something that you should watch the video because it is something that you probably will consider, especially if you just have it like your normal you, foot troopers. They're not fast. You if you're, want if you're like taking this. infantry or battle armor of any type, it yep. is very, very important that you consider a carrier, at yep. least. You might not necessarily have to take one, but you need to consider whether you need one or not because That's they right. aren't very fast. Now, you'd think, oh, you know, most people need it for, you know, attacking to get in position. But like you said earlier, maybe you just need to reposition. Yeah. So having infantry carriers in your force, even though you're the defender, might mm. actually be the, the trick. We will, we will we will show you how that all works yeah. in the next one. That's it. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you. And we'll see all you in the next video. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>